Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Star Wars Miniatures. And um, today we're going to be playing uh, X-Wing again, of course. Um, got two very exciting lists I've really wanted been to uh, to try out on this channel. Um, one will be pretty uh, pretty well known to the people that know me in uh, real life. Um, the Imperial list that you see in front of you, uh, the four TIE Interceptors, or TIE Advanced ships, sorry. Um, I've played them in many tournaments, and uh, I've tweaked the list a little bit since then, uh, but I have kind of a rebel version of that list that I want to verse them. Uh, so these lists are both uh, fairly similar, and I think they will be quite an interesting matchup um, to verse one another. All right, first off, we have three, three X-Wings versus four TIE Advanced ships. Uh, first, let's go along the advanced ships and see what they have. Uh, leading them, uh, there is Darth Vader, uh, kind of a given with the TIE Advanced. He's the best TIE Advanced pilot, pretty much hands down. Um, he has the new title, the TIE X-1, uh, that allows him to take a sensor upgrade uh, with a four point reduction. And uh, so basically he took a free accuracy corrector because it's only three points, so it uh, doesn't cost him anything. And he has a twin ion engine Mach 2 upgrade modification. And uh, what that is, is it's going to give him a lot more green maneuvers. All of his slight turn maneuvers are thus green. And uh, then I gave him Swarm Tactics to share his 9 pilot ability, not pilot skill. And uh, down to uh, Lieutenant Colzit. Um, oh, also to remember uh, Vader's pilot ability in case uh, no one's familiar with him. Um, it allows him to take two actions uh, when he would normally take one, you know, on his action step of his turn. Uh, next up, it's Lieutenant Colzit. He's a three pilot skill. Um, his pilot ability is pretty interesting. It's uh, at the start of the end phase, he can spend a target lock that he has on an opponent to randomly choose one of their damage cards and uh, one of their face down damage cards and flip it face up. Um, I personally like this ability. I think it's pretty neat, and uh, I've used this list, in, this list in a tournament, as I have said before, and let me just say, I have killed the ships with his pilot ability in tournaments before, so uh, I thought he was pretty neat. I gave him I gave him the TIE X1 uh, title again, and uh, free accuracy corrector, and uh, the twin ion uh, modification. So then, uh, moving on to the next ship, we have a four pilot skill generic storm squadron pilot. All it has is the uh, the title and the free accuracy corrector. And then moving on to the last one, got a two pilot skill tempest uh, generic with the uh, free accuracy corrector title, with the title. <clears throat> moving on to the rebel list, it gets a little more interesting. Uh, this entire list is very dependent upon each other. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make it not too situational, but I mean it is situational in the sense that if one of them dies, or uh, more specifically if Wes dies, they're uh, in deep trouble. Um, Wes Jansen has the pilot ability after you perform an attack, you may remove one focus, evade, or blue target lock uh, token from the defender. He's an 8 pilot skill, but I boosted him to 10 with veteran instincts. And then I put uh, the Stress Bot, as he's known, R3A2, that allows uh, the attacker, when they uh, are attacking an opponent that is inside their firing arc, at range 1 through 3, they may choose to receive a stress token to give that person, that ship, a stress token. So he's known as the Stress Bot, and that's if he does not have any stress. Oh wait, that's not true.
Oh. So much of that's nonsense. There is no range restriction as well. All right, and uh, moving on to Wedge and Tilly's. Um, he's a nine pilot skill. His pilot ability is um, when he is attacking, the opponent's agility is considered reduced by one uh, to a minimum of zero. And uh, I gave him the R2 Astromech which means all one and two straight maneuvers are green oh it's just all one and two straight uh, all one and two maneuvers are green not just straight maneuvers I was gonna say because an X wing they're green anyway if they're straight but anyway moving on and then I gave him opportunist which uh, is pretty situational but you'll see why I used it here in a minute um, allows him to take an extra attack dice if he receives a stress token um, this cannot be done if he has a stress token. This can also not be done if the attacker, um, I mean the defender, has a focus or evade token. So I mean naturally that's why I have Wes there to take away focus and evade tokens so he can use that. Moving on, we have Luke uh, Skywalker, pilot skill 8. Um, his ability is when defending you may change one of your eyeball results to an evade result. And I gave him opportunist as well. Uh, again, trying to work well with uh, Wes, J Wes Jansen. And then I gave him BB-8, which is the new astromech from the uh, Force Awakens upgrade set. And his ability is um, when you reveal a green maneuver, you may perform a free barrel roll action. So, he's pretty helpful. And it's going to allow Luke to kind of get into uh, firing position and uh, uh, be able to continue to use his opportunist effect um, against uh, ships that Wes Jansen is attacking. Well, uh, Luke is the one that's out here, and then uh, Wes is the one in the middle, and uh, Wedge is off to the side a little bit. Wes is the one with the gold tip, the gold tip X-Wing. All of my X-Wings are slightly different. Wedge has the dark one. Uh, Luke is in the kind of lighter one that doesn't have a colored nose cone. And then Wes is in the, the golden nose coned X-Wing that has the red astromech. So. Alright, so uh... This is the positioning of the ships. Those are the asteroids. Had uh, all asteroids except for one debris. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, play the first round. We are playing with the Force Awakens um, damage deck since now it is uh, now it is January. So uh, uh, technically, in tournament rules, the uh, the Force Awakens deck is the one that you're supposed to be using. Uh, tournament wise so I was just gonna follow through with that since there's a tournament coming up soon so anyway here we go alright the end of the first round and there was no combat so everyone was too far away the X-Wings moved up one and um, the advanced ships moved up in a beautiful formation of three and four with a calls it and the two taking the lead, and Vader and the four holding back. Um, their formation is kind of taking shape. They're headed towards the asteroid fields. They're kind of narrowing in. So, uh, beautiful formation flying so far. On to the next round. Uh, starting off with the movement phase. Um, they all went, all the X-Wings went straight uh, one green again. And uh, Luke did a barrel roll. Uh, apparently Luke forgot to do this barrel roll the first time. It was a part of the plan. It was forgotten. Um, first round, so he's not really in the position he'd like to be. The others uh, all focused. Same thing with him. Um, Ty Vance are playing a very interesting. Uh, one went forward four, one went forward three, one went forward two, and barrel rolled. And then Vader did a slight one and barrel rolled up. 
and uh, all of them evaded except for the the four in the back so uh, I already measured for range it looks like the lead two um, TIE fighters can attack Wes at least so uh, there will be combat so on to the combat round incredible first round really get to see the might of this build um, right off the bat a TIE advanced went down um, the number two TIE advanced uh, was in range of all three X-wings just barely um, Wes went ahead and attacked and uh, uh, just threw a fabulous dice all all three X-wings I've literally never rolled so good um, Wes had two hits and a crit um, followed up by Wedge rolling three hits and a crit with uh, by taking a stress um, because the ship was forced to use his evade against Wes's attack. Uh, so he defended entirely against Wes's uh, attack, but then Wedge uh, just tore into him, took down the shields, and uh, put on blinded pilot. I forgot to mention also, uh, Imperials got initiative. Um, so, uh, huh. Actually, I did that wrong then. He was supposed to be able to fire before he got his blinded pilot crit. So actually, he was supposed to be able to attack. Uh, he was supposed to be able to attack Wes. So actually, that was not resolved because Vader gave his uh, pilot ability uh, to the two. So actually, I'm going to have to go ahead and resolve that right now. Um, it's not going to make much difference. Uh, Wes was attacked by the three, and uh, he defended everything, but he had to use his focus. Um, oh, anyway, uh, Luke made a shot through debris that actually finished off. He only got one crit through. He rolled three hits and a crit. Uh, everything was evaded except for one, the crit. The crit went through, uh, direct hit, two damage. That finished off the Tempest. But, uh, and the blinded pilot would have, I was thinking, would have negated the attack, but I forgot. Imperials had initiative, so technically he would have shot before, uh, he still would have got his shot in with Luke, because he was sharing the nine. But, I mean, either way, they would, he still would have had to get a chance to fire, but, I mean, he would have fired before he got the blinded pilot, so it would have made a difference. So anyway, um, I'll just do that live, roll for it. Uh, he would have attacked Wes, that was my, uh, that was the Imperial plan. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. Uh, it's just one hit, but accuracy corrector makes two. Um, Wes uh, has three dice, range three. No uh, focus, so one evade would have been one shield. So actually, Wes lost one shield. All right, so Wes is down one shield, and the Imperials are down one ship. The other ships are immaculate, but uh, it's not looking good for the Imperials. All right, uh, on to move. All right, this is the turn that we've been waiting for. This is the turn that will decide the game, pretty much. Um, both squads have formed up against one another. Um, they're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, Luke has continued to bear a rollover to kind of get behind them. And uh, some daring flying there by the three pilots killed Lieutenant Colzit, my personal favorite pilot. Um, just because I think he's really underrated. Um, anyway, um, he moved up. Uh, I think it was a two slight. Uh, and in a ballsy move, 
did a target lock on Wes Jansen. Um, followed up by the four, did a two straight and a Vade. And then Vader did a super ballsy uh, three slight, narrowly missing the asteroid and narrowly stopping right in front of Kulzit. Um, some quite impressive flying. And he focused and evaded. Uh, Wes and Wedge just moved up one straight along with Luke. Luke Bear rolled over with BB-8. So uh, they all have focus tokens. So uh, on to combat. Um, Wes Jansen will be shooting first. Um, I think uh, uh, Vader is going to be the obvious choice. He's going to be in range 2 is the only thing. Wes gets range 1 if he attacks the 3. Lieutenant calls it, but uh, it doesn't matter. It would be range 2 regardless of whether or not the other ones attacked uh, Vader or calls it. So he's going to go with Vader just logically it seems like. Because really he's just there to strip away tokens for the other guys to use an insane amount of dice and uh, Vader declared by the way um, he's given his pilot skill of nine he's sharing it with uh, Colzit this round so Colzit is also a nine so the order will be Wes will fire and then Vader and Colzit will fire and then Wedge then Luke and then the four so uh, Vader may die if uh, the X-Wings are able to focus fire on him, strip away his tokens, and take him down. But uh, it will really depend on Wes's attack. If Wes can force Vader to use one of his tokens, then Wes will be able to take away his other token after the fact. And uh, it is going to be hard. He's He can stress Vader, but it will be hard for to keep him from getting rid of that since he has that modification engine upgrade where he's gonna have a bunch of green maneuvers so uh... anyway on to the move or on to the combat as promised a very exciting round more so than i even anticipated there are now two die advance left but oh so much happened um... wes attacked vader first um, I believe he did not do any damage, forced Vader to use one of his tokens to avoid the damage, and then he stripped out the other one afterwards uh, with his pilot ability, and he also gave Vader a stress, not that it mattered. And then uh, Vader followed up and failed to attack Wes. Um, then Coles had attacked Wes, range 1 failed to hit him as well. Uh, Luke did a four dice attack on Vader, uh, knocked down his shields, uh, got four hits on him essentially. Uh, two shields, two damage. And then uh, Luke got four dice on him uh, and just uh, finished him off. And then, in a crude, surprising end, the four pilot skill I advanced back there, um, rolled nothing, used accuracy corrector against Wedge, or uh, Wes, um, got, got those two hits to go through, because Wes rolled nothing, and uh, took the last shield, did one hull damage, and then in the end phase, at the start of the end phase, uh, Lieutenant Colzit uses special ability, uh, spent his target lock to flip over that damage, it was a direct hit, so Wes is down to one haul. And uh, if he dies, I mean, the others are still very formidable, but without him stripping tokens, uh, the other ships can simply evade, and that will negate uh, the prime advantage that the other X-Wings have enjoyed. Because only together have they been able to take down an enemy ship every turn. It has always come down to the final shot from wet, uh, from Luke after the other two have fired uh, that has brought down a ship. 
well, without one of them. Uh, I mean, chief of chief among them being Wes, the one that's enabling, you know, doing that token stripping that's enabling them to use the extra dice. Uh, the rebels won't have their advantage anymore, and Lieutenant calls it leading the four pilot skill might be able to do some serious damage. So uh, here's the movement. This is going to be an interesting combat round because in the movement round um, there was a lot of bumping. Uh, calls it moved a slight one uh, to try to get him a blocking maneuver. However, he didn't block Wedge. Wedge actually moved out to the side, which worked even better for Calls it because now he's right on his tail. And uh, I mean that's a hard thing to do for a lower pilot skill to get behind a higher pilot skill, but it happened. And uh, Wes Jansen just moved one. Uh, the X-wings were going to K-turn, but. Um, I think the plan was to K-turn anyway, but I think they didn't realize that, hey, we're all stressed because we used our combat abilities. <laughs> so uh, they had to go ahead and uh, do a green maneuver. Now, Wedge was able to do that to slight green uh, because of his astromech. So, uh, but he did end up colliding with that asteroid and took damage, so he lost his first shield. Um, the four end up hitting the debris over here, and uh, he took damage as well, lost the shield. Uh, Wes target locked that same tie advanced, the wounded one, the four. And uh, uh, calls it target locked wedge. You can see over there. And uh, Luke collided with the four, doing a one straight. My also landing on the debris did not take damage though. So on to combat, it looks like Colzit is the only one that's going to get a shot since the other ones are touching. And uh, it's range one. Even though there was only one ship firing, that was so epic. I should have just recorded it. Uh, the Colzit beast, the Colzit train, uh, did some serious damage to Wedge. Uh, range 1 attack, rolled 3 hits, uh, Wedge got 1 evade, and uh, took 2 damage, which is 1 shield, 1 haul, and uh, then the Lieutenant calls it, who had a target lock on him in the end phase, uh, spent it, and uh, got him a crit. That crit was Stunned Pilot. That means uh, if he executes a maneuver that makes him overlap a ship or an obstacle or an obstacle then he suffers one damage so uh, Wedge cannot afford to be running over any more asteroids from here on out and uh, can't afford to be bumping into any ships like Luke was doing so essentially in one turn Wedge went from full health to uh, two hull left, and uh, him and Wes are hurting pretty badly. Uh, Colzit is a very powerful uh, pilot, and again, this is uh, this is why I really appreciate him because he can get that target lock off. He fires late in the game. Uh, he can do some critical damage uh, by not rolling criticals. You know, just get a bunch of hits in, put an accuracy corrector on him to guarantee he's getting some hits, and uh, in the end phase, turn those into criticals. Uh, he's super deadly. So, on to movement. Very interesting movements. Um, this is where we're looking at now. Uh, all three X-Wings survived the movement, even though there was a lot of damage. Um, first off, the, uh, uh, first off, the TIE Advanced, uh, moved, both of them. Uh, the four went down here, Lieutenant calls it, clipped the asteroid, uh, did a three hard, um, got one damage, uh, his first shield loss, and, uh, more importantly, he got right in, uh, Wedge's way. Wedge to the 4K, uh, his template passed over 
through a ship. Uh, so he was forced to receive one damage. And uh, he took that. It was just a standard damage. Uh, Wedge is now, now down to one health. Uh, same as Wes. Um, Luke came through to slight one, cleared his stress. Wes did a K turn. And uh, looks like. Oh, and Luke target locked. Um, Coles it. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Looks like uh, Coles it will have a dilemma if he is able to shoot at one of those X Wings. Either Wes or Wedge, he will have to decide which one he wants to try to destroy. And uh, it'll be interesting because both those X-Wings are down to one health. So uh, if he can hit one, since he has accuracy corrector, there's a pretty good chance he's going to blow one up. So uh, Rebels might have their first casualty this round. End of the combat phase, uh, not what I anticipated. Um, Lieutenant calls it was just barely missing both X-Wings from his firing arc just barely so he couldn't fire at either one however um, well Wes couldn't fire at him either uh, Wes fired at the one down here and missed but he was able to take that token away which didn't really matter um, then these two X-Wings cross-fired uh, Colzit and uh, Colzit ended up taking a, um, his last shields and uh, got a direct hit on him. So he is down to one hall left as well. So this is going to be a very, a very, very interesting round. Um, calls it as in a desperate mad dash to try to kill one of these, uh, uh, one of these ships before the round is over. But uh, he might not live to pull any more target lock tricks. But uh, we'll see. Maybe he's really super tricky, but uh, we'll have to see. On a movement. Very exciting turn. Uh, this was just the movement phase, mind you, and still a lot of shit happened. Um, Luke? Okay, first off with the interceptors, uh, Ty advanced. Um, Lieutenant calls it, did a slight one. And then barrel rolled to the right, uh, right in front of Wedge. When Wedge moved, he did a slight one, which could not help but overlap Colzit. And uh, that destroyed him because of his crit. He took it the final damage, and he is dead. And uh, down here, the other inter uh, advanced, uh, moved down there, slight one, and then barrel rolled a little further away. Luke moved this way, thinking uh, Colzit would be over here, um, be moving that way. But he actually uh, went the opposite way, and then barrel rolled again the opposite way. So uh, Luke is off by himself, <laughs> aiming at no one. And uh, Wes passed Luke a little bit. Uh, beautiful little maneuver there. They just missed each other. And uh, he's still chasing this other ship. So uh, we're down to Luke that has full health, uh, Wes that has one haul, uh, Lieutenant calls it that has one haul, and uh, the four pilot skill tie advanced that has three haul one shield. Um, so I would give slight favor right now to the rebels for sure, but uh, uh, no one really knows. Oh, and Luke has a target lock on calls it, so. Uh, Looks like, let me see if there's even going to be any combat. We are going to have a range 3 attack. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, satisfy that right now. Uh, Wes Jansen is going to attack that 4. He's going to give him stress, receive stress. We have a critical. I didn't give him an action, did I? Ah, oh no, he was stressed. He couldn't do an action. All right, range three. Evaded it. So, no damage. 
on a movement. All right, so this is going to be an interesting combat round. Um, so far in the movement, we had uh, calls it do it too hard, and then a barrel roll uh, to kind of start his turn. And then we had the four say, yeah, forget about. He was tired of running. Forget about clearing the stress. He just did too hard white, and uh, he knows he doesn't get an action, but he knows going toe to toe with the next swing, the next swing is not going to get any actions either. Um, so they're going to be facing off uh, Wedge. I mean Luke did a too hard around that asteroid. Uh, he has a target lock and calls it and focused up. He's going to be able to shoot, uh, so that may be the end of calls it. Uh, this is going to be an interesting combat round. Really want to see what happens. This could be the end of Wes Jansen, though. Because uh, Wes by himself, I'd, I'm going to go ahead and say there's no way he can kill that tie advanced. And that tie advanced only needs one hit. Uh, and he has actually correct her, so. Wes is pretty much dead, I think, this turn. But I think Calls it is pretty much dead, too. So, uh, it'll be interesting. Close, close game. Um, right off the bat, Wes fired at this ship, missed. Luke fired at Calls It and destroyed him, completely blew him away. Um, he just opened up on him. He didn't have any tokens, so he was able to use uh, an extra combat dice with uh, a stress token. And, uh, he basically rolled all eyeballs and then he spent his focus to turn them all to hits and uh, calls it did was at range three I got four dice and didn't roll a single uh, a single uh, evade he did roll all eyeballs so if he had had a focus uh, he would have lived but uh, then again if he had had the focus you know Luke wouldn't have been able to use uh, opportunist so um Uh, then again, down here, uh, where Wes failed, the Storm Squadron pilot did not. And he got two hits, and uh, Wes had nothing. Wes had no tokens. Wes died. So uh, it is now one on one. It's been a very close game, as I predicted. Uh, I mean, it was four on three, then three on three, then two on two. And now it's one on one. I'm gonna still put the favor in uh, the hands of Luke. Luke is a defensive ship. Uh, the way this build is designed to work, uh, Wes and Wedge are supposed to work together, do a ton of damage. Luke is supposed to follow through with their damage, finish things off. And then in the end, I mean, Wes and Wedge are supposed to be high priority targets, obviously, and die. But Wedge, oh, Luke is very hard to kill. And uh, with his pilot ability, it will be hard to kill him. And he will still have pot shots with opportunist here and there. And BB-8 makes him maneuverable. So uh, this is exactly the, the way the re re rebel build is supposed to be destroyed. So uh, yeah, definitely a favor to the uh, rebels. And uh, a reminder, the Storm Squadron has lost one shield from that debris earlier. So, uh, and he has two stress tokens on him. So here we go. Alright, so with the movement phase, um, the TIE advanced a slight one, cleared one of the stress tokens, couldn't do any actions. Uh, Luke came around, did a slight one and then used BB-8 to do a barrel roll and then uh, focused. Uh, he's going to be able to attack at range 2 and it looks like the front... no? no he's still going to be obstructed it looks like um, looking from up here a little off from the camera looks like the attack is still going to be obstructed but uh, he's going to be able to uh, take a stress and use that extra uh, 
that extra dice since the tie advance doesn't have any tokens. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Range to attack. Oh, uh, stress token. Focus. Range three or range two through an asteroid. Four dice. Nothing. So three hits. Shield. Two damage. So now uh, the storm squadron is now down to one hull. And uh, Luke is still at full, so uh, it's looking like it's pretty decided who's going to win. Alright, um, Imperials uh, cleared their stress, barrel rolled in, and uh, forced Luke into a bump. So uh, the Imperials are not giving up without a fight, so back to movement. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do this in real time. Um, TIE Interceptor tried to be, or TIE Advance tried to be tricky. I did it too hard and then barrel rolled over. Uh, tried to get in range, uh, behind the X-Wing, but the X-Wing did not turn that way. It did a 4K. And, uh, TIE Advance does not have a shot. X-Wing does have a shot, range 1. So it's going to be over here, I think, in a minute. So range 1, X-Wing... Two hits. Tie advanced has three dice. Uh, one of eight. One hit goes through. That's the game. So, uh, Rebels were victorious. And uh, I'm quite happy with that build. It's a uh, tournament build that I called my Rebel Aces build. It's my X-Wing Aces, whatever. Uh, the Colzit train was stopped, and I think that was uh, quite a big deal. Um, quite a fan of, of Colzit, but uh, in this build, this Tide Advance build is all about uh, their numbers, just staying together and assaulting with dice, but uh, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this X-Wing build. Uh, but they kind of force you to because they move so slow. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's, uh, both interesting builds. They were very similar. It was a close game, pretty much, but, uh, the Storm Squadron was no match for Luke. Uh, his versatility was quite impressive. I figured out a lot of weaknesses of both builds, and, uh, I got some tweaking to do with the Rebels one still. I noticed a few things that were uh, not not as effective as I thought they'd be. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If there's any builds that you would like to see, go ahead and uh, comment down below. And uh, if there's any anything that you liked uh, or didn't like about the video, just go ahead and give me a little suggestion or uh, message me or something. Uh, we have a Facebook page as well. And uh, if you like this video, like it and share it. I uh, very much appreciate any kind of uh, support. And uh, thanks for watching.